Was, yep. was brewing in this little one. And oh my um, goodness, is she ever a miracle <laughs> in every regard. So, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, and then um, cut to day of birth, mm -hmm. which we did not know was going to be <laughs> She's day of early. Birth. Yes. I was on my way to work. Yeah, you were on your way to work out. Yeah, to work out. Yes. And then I had to go to work. Yes, and we were still in the mm -hmm. midst of just setting up the whole environment for her to come. And I always tell my moms this because every mother that's nesting, and it's so different with a mother who's nesting, who's had something incubated in their body for nine months, to uh, know that, okay, time is getting close because you're going, you're metamorphing through all those little changes. But with a surrogate mom, you're just, every day is the same, yeah. nothing changes. And then all of a sudden you do have this new creation so when I showed up at her house that day, we were unpacking. I said, listen, if she comes today, we're good. And you went, uh-huh, okay. Because I thought I had time, y'all. <laughs> it's one thing to say, yeah, 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 you know, it'll be fine. <laughs> but um, you think you always have a little bit more time. Like, we thought we had at least two more weeks. And so we were right. doing our run-through, our last. Exactly. In case it happens, which it wasn't. Yes. Um, <laughs> You know, here's her bag. This is what you need to grab for her. Here's the car seat. That's right. And y'all, it we get the. I, I go to work out, and our surrogate was like, "My water is is uh, is leaking." Yes. And I was like, "Well, how? What's what's the timetable on this? Like, uh, <laughs> what are we talking here? What time is the meeting gonna happen?" <laughs> and um, and she was like, uh. At any time. Yes. And uh, so Dee's in Miami. That's right. Um, and so we had to get him on a plane to get him in there in time. I called my mom. Luckily, she was able to come. And I take off for the hospital to meet, you know, our, our surrogate and, and her husband and her family there. And, y'all, I forgot everything. <laughs> you know what I didn't forget, though? My wig. <laughs> Shout out to Larry Sims because I was like, what am I going to do? Yes. I'm it because I was Props heading to, to work. I was heading to work and I leave my work wig at work. So I was without a work wig and I was about to be gone for who knows how long. And, you know, and when I, I had to get my work in, wig. And when I showed up in your room, you was like, I got my wig. And she was like, well, what about the baby's bag? What about um, the, the car seat? And I was like, no. Also, shout out to Jessica Alba. Yes. Because I, oh. I hit Jess. I was like, oh, it's happening! <laughs> Another person who I had confided in pretty early on yes. throughout the whole process. And Jess. My other um, daughter. Yeah. <laughs> her her other daughter. daughter. Yes. She was like, I'm going to call Nanny Connie. We'll get it all together. They'll head to the hospital with everything mm -hmm. you need. Thank God you got your work wig, though. Mm -hmm. First things first. <laughs> um, but yeah, literally yeah. since yes. since she was... A thought since she was a hope. Yes. Um, Nanny Connie's been in our lives. And, and we talk about um, that uh, human touch. My whole method of bringing a newborn into any family is the human touch because a baby works off of its senses and their first sense is the sense of touch. So for you to do skin to skin, it let her know exactly who you are and now here's where she needs to morph. And she did do that one. And you were just like, wait a minute, this is a little, okay, wait a minute. Well, explain it. Because I tried to explain it on Oprah and, <laughs> yes. you know, um, yes. but can you explain? I can, I can. The importance. The importance of it is, is now even more so she gets to see it because Kavya loves to, and we've done a post about her and it's fists, mm -hmm. but them to feel your heartbeat and them to know that your pulse is their pulse. They start to calm down because in nine months of being in utero, that's where they've been. They've been living through your your sense of your pulse, you know, your blood pressure, your everything. And they know, hell, I'm protected. But now they're in our world and we're just going to throw them straight into the fire. So you don't do that one. You bring them out and you hold them close to your heart. They've heard this heart for nine months. So why do you just want to cut it cold turkey? And then you go in from that to your human touch and the warmth of your body to them knowing that that's mom. She's okay. And I love her. And I love the situation. And this is where I need to be. 
And that's how you bring one of these little beings into the world as opposed to go, I'm good and, you know, no human touch. So later on, as you develop with her, even when you're feeding her, I get you to do what? Hold her hand, open her hand up and make her feel you. And she relaxes. So it's all about them knowing that that first sense of your five senses or five, six, seven senses is the touch, is your sense of smell. And now she knows the smell of mom. She knows the smell of dad. She knows the smell of, of everybody in the family. And she knows the smell of Nanny mm -hmm. Connie and her, her, her nanny AD. Mm -hmm. So it's been a beautiful journey to this point because now you two are truly bonding. Mm -hmm. When she sees you, she looks at you with those eyes. When you hug on her, she goes, oh, that's mom. And she knows when you're coming. She can't tell you that. So that's truly important. If you don't have a nanny, if you don't have someone who's helping you in that, in that uh, category, these are the things that we're here to tell you guys because when you start off right, you end up right. And this is starting out right. <laughs> Ding. Lesson. <laughs> message. But yeah, so for, for, for all, for all, for all you, all the, all the moms and dads, um, yes. when you bring a baby into this world, whether that's through your body or through surrogacy or adoption, if you have the opportunity to go straight skin to skin, do that. It, mm -hmm. it bonds you in a way that you can't even imagine. Um, so I know it, it probably looked a little weird for a lot of people to be like, what is she in the hospital bed for? Blah. Why does she have a gown on like she just mm -hmm. gave birth? Um, for, for us, it was, I wanted to go skin to skin. Dwayne wanted to go skin to skin. And she needed, your baby That's needs right. to go skin to skin. And it's not you just know? a little square. It's your whole body. You want them to lie up on you. Mm -hmm. You want them to feel you. And it's not like, okay, this designated area. So the hospital gown was a huge help yeah. because we were able to snap it. I was able to put her in and you were able to feel that moment and have a private moment without mm -hmm. it being so open to our whole room that yeah. we had going on. We had nurses coming in and everything. And yeah. that's, that's a truly, I mean, that's like one of the seven, one of the miracles of life is to watch this happen. And we were all there, like we saw her little blue feet. We, <laughs> I mean, she hadn't been washed up. It was, it's, it was just amazing to watch the two of them bond together because Gab was just like, I want her hair in camo. You know, I don't want this. I don't want that. And when she came into the world, it was like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I'm like, I, I don't know. I don't know. I had no answers. <laughs> and now Kavya is giving her those looks. And she's getting that love and that attention. Both parents are getting it. And it's just amazing to watch them. Because no matter if you're a surrogate or if you're a mother who's done it the natural way or a C-section, there is nothing like gazing into your baby's eyes to something that you have made, your DNA. And these two are truly connected. The three of them are truly connected. Yeah, they do a phenomenal job as parents. And when I don't do a phenomenal job <laughs> and I don't have any answers, that's that's the beauty <laughs> of Nanny Cotty. Um, well, you know, before she, she you know, came into our lives and, and helped us, she's been helping families for how many years? Over 30. Over 30 years. Yep. Um, and um, she'd work with so many of uh, my friends' families and, yep. and babies that I've, you know, kids I've, you know, grown to love. And, um, but we all don't have a nanny Connie. And, and um, we don't have that front porch anymore. Yeah. That's what's missing, the front porch. Because Grandmama Nim lived on the front porch. <laughs> it wasn't just Grandmama, it was Grandmama Nim. All of them, your Amy's and your, you know, all of them. Mm -hmm. They lived on the front porch. They helped with the raising. You know, they were instrumental of the foundation. And now we don't have that. And it's, it's something we need to get back to, and I think I'm a dying breed because no one comes in and stays 24-7 anymore, but um, now I do have a right hand. ID has done, a, Andrea has done a marvelous job of helping, but just to have that sense of, okay, how do I hold her? And then her being held in that position makes the two of them bond together better 
because that mom now is going to help when she's 16 and saying, Mom, I want the keys to the car. And Gab takes off one wig and puts on another identity and goes in. Because <laughs> that's going to happen. Because y'all saw yesterday, I look like Janet Jackson. And today I got the bob back because that's, that's how it works with us. <laughs> so, so. But, but like sometimes you just want answers and practical answers. Right. Not... Everybody that's, oh, I've got a thousand and one degrees, but I've, you know, and I, I'm not applying this to real people in real situations. At the end of the day, what's awesome about Nanny Connie is she wants you, you to be as healthy as possible, moms. She wants you to be as healthy and well adjusted, dads. She wants babies, kids mm -hmm. to be as healthy and well adjusted, but she also wants to keep your families intact. It's important. It's important. You know, like mm -hmm. how do, how do you navigate? all these, these massive changes while still staying connected to, mm -hmm. you know, your, 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 your love, your love. Mm -hmm. Uh, and our loves come in all different shapes, sizes and incarnations. And it's important. you know, it's important to keep those connections, um, and those, and those bonds just as strong as the bonds with your, with your baby. Um, and she's got so much experience with that. Well, you know, um, I feel like I'm not accomplished or I haven't achieved my, my, my journey until I know that when I walk out the door, you guys aren't all crying because if you're not all crying, that doesn't mean, that means that you all didn't get into it. And that's what a family does. The dad, the children, they all come around and they're into it together as opposed to you just doing it because you didn't do this by yourself and, and D didn't do it by himself. You did it as a joint venture. And these children aren't going anywhere. And what's going to happen is one day they'll get uh, 17, 18 years old and they'll start putting us in nursing homes. And then what do you think is going to happen? Those nursing homes need to be well equipped and needs to be smart children who've done it. So we need to do well by these kids now. And that's giving them... Before they stick you in shady kids. acres and they turn you to the wall. Because <laughs> you were terrible. Because that S can happen <laughs> real quick. I get, I get threatened with shady pies all the time from my child. But anyway. Um, so being a surrogate, I, I, have, um, I have had a few moms and I've had a few parents that have done the road of surrogacy. And the most important thing to do is in those first couple of months is to introduce them to the sounds of your house. Because nine months they've heard the muffled sounds of the house that they've been in, and that hasn't been your home. But now they're in the home that they're going to be in forever. So they need to hear the dogs bark. They need to hear, you know, the music that's coming from the room down the hall or whatever. Because now that's home. And home is a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And this little one is very resilient, and they do need to morph into where they are. Um, I can't thank you guys enough for um, being so positive to Gabrielle and to little Kavya because this has been an amazing journey to watch. You know, you guys see one side of this woman, but the other side, the mother side, it's phenomenal because she has stepped into the role. And when she doesn't know, there's a deer in head like look that she gives, but she's willing to sit down and go, okay. What do I need to do? And how do I need to do it? And that's what parents need to do. Don't think you have all the answers. Not having the answers is a part of learning as a parent. So don't always say you have the answers and try to pretend you have the answers. Embrace your spouse. Embrace your partner and, and, and work on it together because you'll get further with your children. Um, and don't be afraid, like she said, don't be afraid of being like, I don't know. Having the yeah. first clue. Yeah. Um, and yeah. a lot of people are going to come with a lot of advice and some of it's going to work and some of it's not going to work. Yeah. And that's cool. Yeah. Um, but recognizing when you need help and calling out for it um, is a huge step. And it doesn't make you a failure. It doesn't make you a failure. It doesn't make you less than. It makes you a mom that needs some help. And every mom that you actually talk to that's honest about anything is going to be like, oh, yep. I need help all the time. I need help 24-7.